Okay. Hi, Catherine. How are you doing? Hello. I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. So how's your quarantine been going? I can't complain. Uh, we were meant to homeschool our children, but I didn't do any of that. I felt really in over my head and I'm offended that so many parents think they can just take on the role of teacher when people study their whole lives to put information in your kids' heads. That is tough work and I'm not even gonna attempt. So I just relaxed. So as a parent, are you freaking out a bit about the virus and about like other kids? No. Um, no. I think we're okay here um, in terms of reaction and I'm not sure why that is. Maybe our news is presented in a different way or maybe the Brits just have a real keep calm, and carry, keep calm and carry on, but I'm certainly less anxious than a lot of my Canadian friends that I still speak to. Right. Uh, we're just, you know, we have high numbers here, relatively, but for some reason we're not anxious and maybe that's why our numbers are high. <laughs> here we're just always anxious, you know that. I didn't think that was true about Canadians. I thought that everyone was chill and then I spoke to my friends from a small town with no cases and they're absolutely freaked out. So you've, yeah. you've really changed since I left. <laughs> sorry, so how's your family? They're in Sarnia still, right? Did How you just doing? say sorry? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Not changed that much then. <laughs> um, my family are all over now. My little middle sister has moved to BC. She's been there for a while. My mother and my little sister live in Toronto. She, uh, my mom lives kind of Ossington and Bloor, and then my sister lives in the East End a little bit with her husband. And then only my dad is left in Sarnia. So I really embarrassed mm. everyone. They're humiliated and they just had to get out of Sarnia. Apart from my dad, he holds strong. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so the Duchess, tell me, for those who don't know about it, tell them the whole elevator speech. Okay, the Duchess follows a very fashionably disruptive single mother who celebrates the central relationship of the show with her child. That is the main person in her life, her sidekick. And then there are men who come in and out. There's a career that she's passionate about, but she never disparages being a parent. I see so many single moms who are sad and messy and that's not my experience. So this woman is fashionable and happy and she loves being a mom and she's thinking about growing her family in a very unusual way. And so while you were writing, did you get your daughter's approval on how your fictional daughter would be portrayed? Not at all. My daughter understands that I take a lot of creative license in my stand-up. She definitely knows that there is a difference between my stage persona and me at home. And she knows that when I tell stories about her, from the time she was three years old, she would come to a show and she'd say to my friend, she'd say, um, I know this, but the beginning is true, but then mommy changes the end. She does that for the comedy. Like she totally understands um, fictionalizing a central authentic theme. And she knows that the Duchess isn't about her. It is not, it's my truth. And I try to always be revealing about my authentic, passionate ideas and social themes that I wanna get in. But then I decorate it with fiction and this is silly, silly fiction. So I'm assuming as producer, you had a hand in the casting process. So what was it like working with and like filming with Kate and with Michelle and with Rory and with Steen? I had a hand, but I did not have full control. I was not all powerful. And that really took the pressure off because I, I really can't stand the idea that we see so many talented child actors, especially, and all the girls that we saw were wonderful. And we just had to say no to so many and we had to pick one and that was soul destroying. And I don't think that I would have had the mental toughness to do that when I was a child. Kate was just incredible from the moment I saw her. She had this ethereal poise, this real maturity, but not in a demonstrative, confident way. She was very um, quietly confident, prim and proper, just what we were looking for. And we had great chemistry. 
Um, I just knew it had to be Katie from the beginning and I loved working with her. She was an old soul on set, really made all the adults laugh and she was just calm. You just want to be around cool, calm people at work. And it was her first job. And I don't know if we will ever get her back. I think she'll be taken, you know, she'll be on to the crown or something special because <laughs> she is so special. And then I invited some of my friends from the stand-up comedy circuit to audition because I thought they would be great for the roles. So for Bev, I've known Michelle for a dozen years. We started in stand-up together in the UK. I've always admired her style. If you see Michelle, um, she's an incredible actress. She was actually a model for a long time as well in New York. And she's had such a career and she's so, so talented. And her stand-up is really revealing and um, confessional like mine. So I loved her and I'm so glad that when she came into audition, she blew everyone away at Netflix and Clark and Well, the production company. So we offered her the job. Steen Raskopoulos, who plays Evan, he's my friend. Kind of awkward because he's my husband's best friend in the UK. And we had to do like some love scenes and that was no good. <laughs> <laughs> but they're okay now they're like they're back to being buddies they didn't mind steen's a very professional actor my husband didn't care at all everyone understands it's acting right apart from me i was really shy doing a love scene i thought i could do it i wrote it i really thought oh actors you know they're just pretending it's fine it's fine but when it comes down to it that's what separates the stand-ups from the actors and i just thought Oh no, I'll stick to being revealing with my words and I will be keeping my trousers on for the rest of my career. For the rest of my career. There will never be a love scene and that's an exclusive and a promise. <laughs> okay, so I love the haircut episode and I love the wedding episode. Did you have like a favorite scene or moment to shoot? I love those scenes as well. Um, the wedding episode to me, being able to showcase more of the boy band Mm -hmm. was really important because I grew up in that era where the girl band, boy band boom was just so meaningful and ubiquitous. Um, so we get to have a little bit of fun with that in the wedding. And it really looks and feels like a rom-com. I think people don't expect mm -hmm. the show to have the heart and the softness that it does because of some of the more explosive scenes. But my favorites maybe were the explosive scenes. I think it's really fun to elaborate, ironically, on a perspective that is villainous. You know, I don't have those perspectives necessarily, but I'm very happy to play a villain and to shout at the mums on the school run and to be enemies with my ex and really just be a bad person. That was fun. <laughs> So as an actress, is there a particular moment that you're really proud of achieving? Um, I didn't want as much emotion in it. I felt like I really wanted to keep it a comedy. Remember when there were just comedies when I was growing up and they had warmth, but now I think I see a lot of beautiful work and I admire it so much, but it's drama woven with comedy. It could be a little heavy for me. So the heavier bits, you know, usually I'm not crying. I just put something corrosive in my face. Uh, so I can't say I'm proud of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, just peppermint or like lemon water. Um, I feel like I'm probably proudest of getting in the pond because there are these really tough, mostly older women I know who do winter swimming. I know this happens all over Canada, the polar bear swim or whatever. And we tried to make it look like spring, but it was winter. Winter in London's not as intense as a Canadian winter, but I was cold and I got in the water and I actually loved it. It's quite invigorating. You feel limitless when you come out of a cold water swim and I am converted. I love it. So what have you been watching? What have you been doing during quarantine? I have a pony. Well, it's my daughter's pony, but I have to look after him. 
And during quarantine, we keep him at a stable over the road where other owners have horses as well, but we couldn't cross paths because of the virus. So we just let all the horses out into the field. It was an absolute free for all. And my pony was very sexually aggressive with some of the larger ladies and they were defending themselves quite rightly. I was, as a feminist, you love to see it, but they were, he was in danger of being hurt. So I had to go out and check that he was okay all the time. And then I learned that if you change their feed to a less sugary one, then it calms them down sexually. So this is a revelation and I feel like we can apply it in other areas of life. If yeah. you have, you know, a lecherous neighbor who's inappropriate, shouts things from his van, just change his feed. Uh, I started yeah. watching a lot on Netflix. I watched Tiger King, of course. Yeah. I saw a lot of Selling Sunset. I love the fashion in that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I rewatched a lot of old box sets, um, like The Office US and Schitt's Creek. I did a lot of watching. <laughs> and so I'm curious, after your say no to this little uh, speech, did Lynn manuel Miranda ever reach out to you or Jasmine Cephas Jones? Or yes, I had to reach out myself to Lynn manuel Miranda if I wanted to include a Hamilton excerpt in my latest Netflix special, Glitter Room. Right. You can't just go around singing Hamilton songs. <laughs> Watch, I'm a girl in a world in which my only job is to marry rich. My father has no son, so I'm the one. Now you can't even show that unless you call him. Um, I, I had to know call Catherine. I know, I love it. Um, but you had to call him and ask. And he saw the bit before it went out streaming on Netflix. And he said it was fine and he liked it. And all he asked for was a donation to the Puerto Rican relief fund. He didn't ask to be paid himself. He's just such a wonderful man and such a talented creator. So he tweeted it. He's into it. He saw it before anyone else. Oh. And as a Canadian, I have to ask, has Celine Dion ever reached out? No, and I love what? Celine Dion. But I did take a risk criticizing her relationship. I think when I criticize age gaps or trends like that. I'm talking about culture on a larger scale. I'm never really trying to attack one family. And I certainly, Celine Dion was not on the receiving end. I have nothing but love and admiration for Celine Dion. And I really hope she calls me one day. I want to <laughs> be like a comedy version of Celine Dion when I'm older. I had strange teeth and I wasn't accepted in my hometown until I was older, just like Celine Dion. Yeah. Good fashion, just like Celine Dion. I'm okay. really on a <laughs> hopeful path to becoming a tiny gay icon, just like Celine Dion. <laughs> and and um, speaking uh, of gay icons, I know you feel very strongly about the Kardashians. So how do you feel about them ending the show? I feel hurt and abandoned at a difficult time. I don't know why the family would pull the plug right in the middle of a pandemic and real difficult political divisions. I need the Kardashians. And yeah. I understand that a lot of people view them as a vacuous fertility cult, but I relax when I watch their show because they're sweet and kind to one another. They are a matriarchy type women relationships. And they have tasteful interiors. And that's what I hope to show in The Duchess as well. But with, and, you know, less Kanye. Right, right. We can't all have a Kanye <laughs> in our house. <laughs> and no, finally, the is Duchess there has gonna... almost no Kanye. <laughs> is there going to be a second season of The Duchess? A second season is not up to me. I feel like those decisions are made based on how many people respond to the project right away. I've learned with my friends releasing books or shows of their own. You do have to go out and order the book right away, watch the show right away, show that you support it and you like it and share it. And I think that's how they decide. I would love to do a second series. I feel like the end of season one is just the beginning for Catherine. Mm -hmm. 
Well, thank you so, so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And I can't wait to see what you do next. I really thank appreciate you. it. And we hope to get back to Canada soon. Well, Toronto yes. anyway. Yes, oh, yeah. please. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Really appreciate it, Lira. Bye.